It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. To infinity and beyond! Get off, Napoleon. Make yourself a dang quesadilla. I know kung fu. This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. And my axe. This should be open, because it's civil rights. This is the 90s. You're going to need a bigger boat. 1.21 gigawatts! I'm going to make this pencil disappear. <laughs> Gucci. Welcome to the Kettlecast Movie Roundtable. I'm your host, Kendall. With me, as always, is Ian. Hey. Nick. Hey. <laughs> and Jeff. Hey. <laughs> Today we're we're talking about uh, uh, the Bullet Train, um, the movie that Nick picked. Nick, why'd you pick this movie? Uh, mostly because I watched this over the holidays, and this movie is just tons of fun. I mean, hmm. it it feels a lot like Kill Bill, I think, yeah. and just the silliness, but at the same time, like really quality entertainment. I mean. It just felt good, and you know, coming off a strong movie like my last pick, Down Periscope, we're looking for nothing but quality here. Yeah. We're keeping that quality train moving. No pun intended. Okay, so I, so I, I'll say I watched it over the holidays and really liked it. Um, on I did not think it held up as well on a second viewing, um, but uh, but it was but it's a fun it's definitely a fun movie, definitely worth a watch, and it's you know it's on Netflix. I'll also say this was a movie that I saw I saw the trailer for one million times in theaters. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure that they started having trailers for it before the the pandemic, and it was in and if not, it was in every single movie that I saw post pandemic. I mean, so, which I saw them a lot I've on YouTube too, like trailer ads for. Yeah, it I was gonna say I'm yeah. not I didn't really go to theaters much during the <laughs> pandemic, so didn't really come up a lot for me. But... Well, I again pre and post, <laughs> yeah. not during. But but like but like uh I mean I did see a couple movies during the pandemic, but uh which was great because there were like nobody in the theaters. <laughs> um but uh but yeah, it was. I saw it saw so many times. We we joked. Uh, my wife and I joked about this movie being the movie that takes place in Japan that doesn't have any Asian people in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. A few, but not it, many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were not the in father. the trailer. Yeah, the father and well, his father. Yeah, that's true. They're right. not in the trailer. The right. only person, the only Asian in the trailer is the uh, is the 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 lady that works there and is selling them, and I think she ends up being one of the people that with the snake or something oh, she dies yeah she dies yeah yeah that's yeah what about like the father and the grandfather yeah not in the trailer oh they're on the trailer got it okay okay yeah yeah that, that, would, yeah, that, that would, would give away actual story which apparently this is the one movie they're not going to do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean you could have you could have the, the sun guy in there yeah. without or like yeah, the, 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 the one trailer guy the trailer was almost entirely just the the scene where he's like do you have anything sparkling oh yeah and and, and that was that, funny and that and then, and then there's a little bit of a little bit of stuff with the, uh, with uh, with lemon as well. But um, yeah, I mean, if you got Brad Pitt, you're gonna show Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah this is a Brad Pitt movie, definitely. Yes, but uh, but no, but it's it's a fun movie. I, I yeah. What did you guys think? So I basically my take is that this movie felt like it was created, and you already alluded to this, Nick. But it feel felt like it was made by like. Quentin Tarantino's, like, assistant director who was making his movie for the first time. Like, it felt like a Tarantino movie in both, like, action, violence, comedy, but it it's wasn't... It's not quite as clever as a Tarantino Right, movie. it wasn't quite as good, right? I would argue that, like, it's not a, it's not on the level as Tarantino's best movies, but, like, it's along the same lines and it's still decent. But right? it's better than some of Tarantino's movies. <laughs> right, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't as self-indulgent and boring in, uh, as a lot of Tarantino's movies... <laughs> And and I thought Tarantino was... is self-indulgent and boring, shallow and pedantic. Foot stuff. Yes. I mean, Family I mean, I don't think I'm. I don't think that I'm out of line <laughs> saying that. Saying that sometimes that like once a time a time in Hollywood was pretty self-indulgent. I mean, all of his movies are self-indulgent. Um, let's be real. I don't. <laughs> I don't think I'm out of line there. Uh, but uh, but and also I, I felt like the 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 
the violence in this was a little bit more cartoonish. It, there was there was gore and there was some shocking gore in this, but the violence was a little bit more cartoony in this than you would have in a, in a Tarantino. Sure, I sure. think. Um, so for me, I, I'd say this this was I had fun. First of all, let me say I had fun. Like, sure, why not? Um, it, it's pure spectacle. Uh, mm. I just I felt like. Um, Anything, anything could happen at any time for any reason, mm. and you just like go with it, right? And right. as long as you're good with that, like just what? Okay, that happened. Why just not? like them, right? you're going on for the ride. Just yeah, go along just, for the ride. just go along with it, and it's <laughs> yeah. all good. Yeah. Everyone involved is confused, so why yeah. not you too? It's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but like if you try to think that it's clever, I don't think it's really that clever. It's kind of like it's kind of like a who done it, where the final solution comes out completely nowhere. Right. Like, yeah. like there's no way you could have actually seen anything coming. So like mm-hmm. it's, it's not playing fair from that perspective, but like for the spectacle for Brad Pitt being charismatic, you know, mm-hmm. funny Brad Pitt, like it's all there. So you hit, I think you hit the nail on the head there where, and this is where on second viewing it, it was, it bothered me a little bit. So um, another movie that I watched like right around the same time was glass onion. Oh yeah. Um, mm. and, uh, uh, it's the, uh, you know, it's, it's the, it's the, the knives, the, out, the knives out. Yeah. Sequel. I know it. I just right. haven't seen it. Um, but it was, it was uh, also sort of a twisty turny mystery. Um, but unlike, and, and actually not like the, the Ryan Johnson with knives out and with glass onion, it does a similar thing where like, you probably couldn't actually, like predict what was going to happen next, but what's different? The difference between those those films and this is that on on second viewing or just reflecting back uh, to early to earlier in the films, you could see where they where they gave you some clues that something was going to happen or that there was something going on with that mm-hmm. with this character or this whatever. I felt like this movie often a number of times it it does the sort of from from different people's perspective, unreliable narrator, flashbacky stuff, but in a way that like, on se- I'm like I still didn't like. It's not like I see. It's not like I should have seen this in that scene. Like for the like for example with the wolf, um, you know, revealing that that uh, that Brad Pitt was 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 at the wedding and he was the waiter that bumped him so that he spilled his wine. Yeah, like if. If it was if it was done better, then when you watch it back, when you watch it again, you'd say, "Oh yeah, that's Brad Pitt." With this, I was like, it "There's no way, there's yeah. no way to tell that that's Brad Pitt." Like you, you can kind of see his hair a little bit, but like you don't, they don't show like a flash of a flash of his face or the corner or or his horn rim glasses or something. Like there's no defining characteristic about that character in that in that moment. Which makes it a little strange that, like, the wolf gets so mad and attacks Brad Pitt to the level that he does. Where it's like, I get that wedding was traumatic for you, right? But, like, what are the likelihood that you'd really remember some random no-name waiter? I mean, that, that would stick know. out in your head to that degree. I don't right? know. I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. It's just that, like, because the film is so twisty and turny, like, it should... I feel like on second viewing, thing, you should be able to see where, how they got from point A to point B. Sure. And I didn't think that it. I didn't think that this did as it did a very good job of. And that's not to say that, that on, it on, never on future viewers. it never like sets anything up like it does. Um, it like you know like the reveal that the mascot is the um, is the hornet. Right. Yeah. Right. Like like she they, tries to take the, they take take the briefcase that up. later. Uh, earlier, yeah, and yeah. stuff like. Uh, stuff like uh, lemon, or is it tangerine? <laughs> lemon. Tangerine's the, the white, white guy. guy. Okay. Lemon's the black guy. Lemon's yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, lemon's bulletproof vest. Yeah, right. They set that up. How, they, how yeah. they, you know, said he said he wasn't wearing one because it makes it right. But then it turns out he was. Like, there's like stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's a few. I mean, and it's like a very like. And then of course you literally have the Chekhov's gun of the her messing with the gun, right. her putting right. her explosives in, right. in the gun or whatever that. That eventually shows up. So there's a few things like yeah, that. Yeah, there's a, there's a few things, but it just most of the time it's just like any yeah, zany, yeah, just yeah. whatever. Yeah, right. You don't really get too much of it on the on the second pass that you would have on the first. The only thing that I did notice, I think, on the second viewing that I completely missed the first time was when he uses the diesel sticker on her back. Oh yeah, which so that kind know. of a big big yeah. big moment. Right. <laughs> I know for me, like 
the thing that I felt like the the movie stumbled a little bit is again like I kept trying to like make this statement where Brad Pitt's like, oh, this is coincidence, this is coincidence. Or he thinks he's like, oh, I have bad luck, I have bad luck, right? But then as you watch and you realize all these things happen, it turns out he has great luck, right? He yeah, just his doesn't luck realize. is amazing. He just right. thinks it's bad. But he thinks it's bad. slightly bad happens but like, instead of awful. But then he, the movie kind of suggests, no, this has nothing to do with luck, right? It's fate. And, and they, they call back to that multiple times and he even has a conversation with Sandra Bullock about it at the end. But, I, but I'm like, but you don't really do anything with that, right? It doesn't, like, fate for what reason, for what purpose, like... Mm why like if they just say well maybe it's fate and then they just kind of leave it there and i'm like if if you're gonna like undercook that so much then just take that no, exploration out of the movie i love that he's so obsessed with it because he he is willing to repeat anything that someone will tell him if it makes mm. him feel slightly better uh mm. so like he's trying he's just he constantly changing like what he says like right, going right. back and yeah. forth his opinion doesn't really matter because he's so willing to change it. Well, I get that. I'm just saying, like, I think it's not... It's, what I'm talking about isn't so much, like, Brad Pitt hearing something from his therapist and then repeating it, right? <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious, yeah. right? But I'm more... I think the movie itself is sort of trying to make a point, right? That, like, this is... All the crazy shenanigans that are happening right now, it's not just random coincidences luck, right? Fate is at play here. And I think they try to show that at the end when like the train is crashing and lemon randomly comes back and crashes into the crashes into the girl with the truck right and, but like they just don't Team. bring it together yeah. the, well at the end it just say, still all comes kinds off of people like, died in this movie though. right so, they have it coming <laughs> or so, like speaking of speaking of uh speaking of the the tangerine truck at the end um this is what i caught on the second pass at the very very beginning of the movie when brad pitt steps in a puddle because and the and there's a truck drives in front of him it is the tangerine truck oh okay. i didn't know that that's yeah. cool yeah that's yeah. a good so that so, i forgot about that but so I there, it has its the film has its moments with that stuff but it just kind of doesn't like i didn't i never i never totally got the the daughter's motiva- motivation um yeah like her dad ignored her and she's mad about it like like i, I, I don't know kill him, she sort of just yeah. felt like an ele- in, 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 like an element of chaos which i guess is the point of the the, the archetype of the diesel. I mean, maybe it's maybe that's the point of the movie is that is that is that everybody is is that everybody is is not they don't have names they just have they just have like archetypes. Yeah. Um, like the Tom Mr. Train Engine uh, character. Yeah. Like, the didn't... problem though is that like Tank Engine. Like yeah, Tank <laughs> Engine, right? But like the movie like under uh, like undercuts itself too many times for me. Like for example, you know they're trying to show that Brad Pitt's character has really good luck. And so the train is crashing, and he's flying through it, and, oh, look, he bounces on the, the costume, and he survives. How lucky and fortunate is that? I mean, that? it'd be kind of lame if he died at that well, point. Well, but the point <laughs> the point that I'm making, though, is that, like, everyone survived that, right? Not just Brad. Like, yeah, all the major characters did. It is a little did. extreme. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you're going out of, uh, out of your way to show that Brad Pitt, like, luckily survived, but everyone did, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> or the scene earlier, right, where Lemon... Like the two guys Lemon... on top of the train did not survive. Okay. But, like, <laughs> but, like Lemon, you know, saves Brad Pitt at the end, and Brad Pitt, oh, can we be friends now? And Lemon's like, no. But then right after that, he, like, charges the guy and jumps off the train, pr- like... Presumably to his death for some reason. I'm like, why well, did he just? Because he's got no, re- he's got no reason to live. The train's gonna crash. Like but, he's just, he's just going through the. But he's like, I don't point. care about you, actually, Brad Pitt. But I am going to sacrifice my life right now to save you. Like all, it just doesn't. All of the make hero sense. characters are basically just massive walking contradictions. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Where all the villain characters are just are are somewhat, I don't know, one dimensional almost to an extent. Yeah, I just feel like the movie like tries to say something, but then it kind of subverts itself a little, like almost immediately. Maybe it's for the sake of spectacle, but I think it kind of hurts the storytelling. It's fun. To an it's a laugh. Yeah. yeah, they're not they're not really trying to change your mind about the just fate don't of the look, universe. Just don't look too hard at it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you might be going a little too deep on this. Yeah, one. it's well. No, I, I think the movie <laughs> tries to go a little deep, but then doesn't. The stick thing is, yeah, I, if you're no, gonna I, go deep, agree, don't try. I actually agree with Jeff here a little bit. I don't think it it totally takes me out of it, but I mean it's the same. It's the same thing as I was saying earlier with the like the twists and turns and hoping that because because I was able to see the twists and turns that on a second viewing it, I'd be able to you know be able to see the seams before be able to see the foreshadowing but they don't when they don't do the foreshadowing yeah um it it it, it loses something there and I don't know I, I'm kind of back and forth on the on the contradictions and the and the ideas of the archetypes that the daughter thinks that and everybody thinks they're the star, uh, like every everybody they have thinks main they're the main character. Of the you're movie. in my of the story. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she literally says you're in my story, but 
but it very much and we think we're that it's that it's Brad Pitt, but really it is it, it is, is her very, story. <laughs> he <laughs> wasn't even extent. he wasn't even supposed to be there, right? He just the movie ends to when she there. dies. Right, it's her right. story. <laughs> um, and and of course you have and, and I mean adding to the spectacle, you have all the cameos. Um, the you know the fact that it's Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum yeah, yeah you, have, you have Channing Tatum. You have Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. And then even even the White Death being revealed as as Michael Shannon yep. is is definitely like a like a an interesting um, like a, I don't know feel, felt like stunt casting right Superman's got to fly in there and break his neck yeah the director um, gets blown up as the seventeenth kill yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it but but it's I don't know but it kind of but it kind of worked I think I think it it throws around a lot of ideas. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that, and so, and I, and I think the sum. I mean, it's definitely a fun. It's definitely a fun movie. Yeah. And I think that there is something to. I, I don't know, like just throwing a bunch of ideas, like you know, that the ladybug. You know, is he is he lucky? Is he unlucky? Or is it fate? Is he is he sucking up all the bad luck around him? And then also, like, is the fact that he sucks up he sucks all the bad luck around him towards himself, like that doesn't make him happy. Like yeah, I, that's what I, he I said. Think, that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think that's you know that's a really interesting thing. Um, I'll be I'll be really interested. I feel like they've I feel like they have they've set this up so that a hundred percent could have like you if Brad Pitt wants to because it pretty clearly uh, see I mean it I don't know like who, Brad Pitt's just out to have fun at this point. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know I don't know like how involved he was behind the scenes, but I get the feeling that this was kind of a Brad Pitt vanity project. Like the and and so if he wants to, he probably could um, do a lot more. I also wonder. I wish I would have like looked up trivia. I wonder if if because um, now that I'm saying it out loud, maybe the I think the the previews did start after the pandemic. I wonder if this um, like most of this movie was a very very small cast. They filmed it in uh, two sound stages. The entire movie in two mm. sound stages. Okay, in four months <laughs> nice. during but COVID. During okay, so it was during yeah. COVID. Okay, yeah. mm. so so that's uh you know that's an interesting that's another interesting thing about this that they were able to pull off a, a very exciting action movie um that was that was also like kind of a bucket episode um very uh very very cool in that in that sense um in the I mean the visuals and the the CGI and everything looked looked really impressive. Um, the yeah, and I don't know, like the the intertwining stories. Some of it, some of it really worked. But yeah, I, I do think I do think I agree with Jeff that uh, that there were some stuff that yeah that missed for me. It's but. not a perfect movie. Yeah, but it had like a good way of revealing information and and like it slowly comes out that White Death had arranged all of them to be there mm-hmm. and yeah. kind of like a whodunit, right? Like yeah. everyone's brought to the island and you don't know about their connection to each other right. and, and to the crime until it all comes out over time. Yeah. Yeah. Same same kind of deal. Yeah. Like who are these people? How'd they get here? What's their what's their relationship? To- I would say I would say if you're going to watch one movie like that then watch Class Onion. Sure. Yeah. I mean, watch both. But uh, oh, yeah, you can watch both. Yeah. You can watch. You have my permission. <laughs> I recommend them. But like, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I think that it's it's just so it's so hard because with a movie like this, because yeah, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's something worth it's something worth watching. But it's like, is it you know, is it is it does it does it rise above or is it just a? I I feel like it aspires to be greater than it is, uh-huh. which is probably a good thing. You know, yeah. I think probably films should. It has a lot of ambition. Um, I I just I just I think it I think it misses the mark a little bit. Also, I will say that I did not I I didn't watch it on one point five speed like some people do, um, <laughs> but. Um, but watch, um, you watch one movie that you've seen before at one point five speed, and then complain and that, and then complain that the humor didn't work in it. Um, it. I still think it's not as good, but it's fine. But uh, but I definitely like I watched this. Um, I did watch it. I did watch it in between phone calls while I was while I was working, and and so there were some there were a few stretches where the um, where the uh, the drama was undercut a little bit. But um, how many minute chunks did you watch this movie in? I, I was exaggerating when I said three minute chunks. It really was. It actually was like because I because I had, it was like the last like, there was a clean hour where I didn't have a call, 
yesterday and then um and then there was about 45 minutes where I didn't have a call today um but then the other chunks were were broken up into small pieces yeah um so like I, I did watch most of it but it was on a computer screen with my work phone stuff on the other screen um yeah you know so it wasn't it, it wasn't as opposed to you know sipping on sipping on good whiskey on Christmas Eve in my in-laws home theater surround sound setup like that's a better way of yeah that's a better way of watching it um <coughs> but uh, I would be surprised if the second one was better somehow that would be an achievement <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes there are movies that, like, on a second viewing, it's it's better. Mm. Or, and also, sometimes, like, the fact that I'm, when I'm, like, hey, I remind myself, hey, I'm watching TV while I'm at work. Like, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good, too. So, speaking of pretty good, I think one thing that this movie does really well that I noticed while watching is, like, how well it handles exposition. Right? So, like, they'll, you know, like, the wolf will appear in the, in the subway, and you're like, who is this person? And then, boom, the movie immediately explains it to you, gives you a flashback, makes the flash, flashback interesting and funny. <laughs> and fun. Yeah. And fun, and then somehow does it really economically and briefly and efficiently, so that you're back into the action immediately. And yeah. it does this constantly, right? Yeah. And I'm well, like... I guess we're learning his whole story. Right! Now. Like, they go through his backstory in, like, two minutes, <laughs> yeah. right? But it's compelling. He's only in the film for, like, five. Right! Yeah. And, you know, and he promptly dies. And, <laughs> or even the scene, right, where um, Lemon confronts Brad Pitt, right? And he's like, you just killed someone, didn't you? And Brad Pitt is thinking about Wolf, and Lemon is thinking about the a white death son, right? Yeah. And they immediately, like, skip to both and, and they're able to communicate both of their thoughts without like awkward yeah that's true thought it's good editing. yeah like yeah. this movie ha has a ton of that where there's really good editing and cuts and they're able to like play with the pacing in such a way where i felt like i was able to follow every character why they were important and even grow to care about them in like the three minutes that i got to know I will, them i will say i will well say done. that and it, and it kind of worked here but like i do always cringe in movies where it's like if you would just talk for two minutes right just just explain they your situation they tried one, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, i think i think sandra bullock being brought in kind of like and it happens to a lesser extent to all the characters where they're they're all confused to a certain extent and they're just trying to explain what's happening to each other yeah and really helps helps the audience just feel like they're involved with it yeah because brad pitt explaining what just happened and, and Sandra Bullock explaining why he's forgotten something is, right. I think, a really good fit. Don't you wish you had your gun? Sorry, but you chose spiritual enlightenment instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines. I'm working on the dose. And then he puts the entire thing in. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like other movies can like take some notes from this one. Obviously, this movie's tone, I think, adds to that ability in, all, in ways that other movies can't. But like... They handled exposition really well here, where a lot of other movies yeah. struggle in that area. And the fact that we're talking yeah. about like an action, like cameo heavy, just kung fu movie, basically, and, yeah. and our main complaints are foreshadowing and uh, sure. philosophy is a pretty good sign for the movie. Yeah. yeah, I think movies that don't have Brad Pitt in them could learn from this movie and cast <laughs> Brad Pitt, well, and, and cast yeah. Brad Pitt as your lead. <laughs> and having the song, I need a hero at the end, but sung in Japanese or whatever. Yeah, I was I trying was to awesome. find. I was trying to find uh, holding on for the. I, I can't get my Google Chrome to well, the load, Japanese but... one's just called Hero, and mm -hmm. then the, the okay. English one is holding out for a hero. Holding out for a hero. But yeah, holding out for yeah, holding out for a hero in 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 Japanese. It's a recording from 1985, and I looked up the artist, and I can't remember who it is now. Um, but uh, is a freaking great. And they also have right. I Will Survive in English, Spanish, and Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a great moment. I really yeah. enjoyed that, right? There were a lot of those really the, yeah. really solid music choices. For sure. I think. Yeah, the music choices. Like, music, sound, editing, right? Like, acting was phenomenal. And, like, the, the, the relationship and banter between Tangerine and Lemon, I think, was the best part of the mm -hmm. movie, right? Like... Even in the very beginning, right, when you're going, stuff and, yeah, yeah, and you're going through and you're seeing all, they're arguing over how many people they killed and you're going through and you're rewatching it again right. and you're like, oh, I forgot about that random innocent guy at the end. <laughs> Dang it. We shouldn't get blamed for that one. That wasn't our fault. Right. <laughs> but then that banter throughout the entire movie, we're like, are they good guys? Are they bad guys? Yes. Kind of both. Right. But it was yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Everyone's kind of both. In this yeah. Movie. Right. <laughs> it's not a morally black or white movie for sure. Although I guess, let's see, I guess the only truly innocent person that died in this movie was the waiter the wait the the train cart lady because she gets stabbed by hornet right oh uh, i totally didn't notice that yeah well because hornet takes her outfit 
That's right. And becomes her. Yeah, okay. So And um, assumably anyone in that town that got hit by a train while they right. were having tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, you don't—you never see what happens to the conductor. Like he buys out all the tickets, but the staff's still on there. <laughs> right. I mean, they—I think there's a line at some point where they're like, "Didn't everybody get off at one of yeah. the?" But, yeah, they uh, all, the ticket they all guy. Got off. Yeah. So they all kind of get off slowly. Well, I was expecting the ticket guy who kept being like ticket. Like I was yeah, expecting I him he to would be, be important. At the end, yeah, sure. like he, yeah, there'd be some he's, twist with him. And he's but. played by Hiro Nakamura from Heroes. Yeah, from Heroes. I don't know the actor's name, but I know his character right. is Hiro Nakamura. I thought he was. I thought he was going to be the White Death at first because the White Death always had a mask on or in all the flashbacks, yeah. right? So I'm like, oh, he's going to be an important <laughs> person that we know. But it turns out he wasn't, which I liked because every time there's a character with a mask I, on, I would have liked for him to have been important somehow. I think at the end, I don't know. But it's such a cliche that you have a character with a mask on, and then oh, they take off the mask, and it was your best friend the whole time, right? I mean, I'm not, glad. Yeah, maybe not the White Death. This is one <laughs> example, one time where the White Death had a mask on and he was a unique person he wasn't it wasn't like a twist it actually was a big white russian guy yeah right, <laughs> right? Well, it was michael shannon i mean it was a, it was a i mean it was a stunt casting yeah it was, it was odd yeah i also loved the two henchmen that were like why do we have to open this right. I don't want to open this. <laughs> <laughs> you think these masks are going to protect us right <laughs> yeah i that that's funny. what i that was one thing i didn't catch so did she did the daughter put the bomb on the briefcase? Yes, or was she it, put yeah. the bomb in she the briefcase did. as soon as he unlocked it. Okay, right. Okay. So you saw her kind of because they had that conversation sure that I, about yeah. inert and not inert. <laughs> yeah, I think that I, uh, I think that I did not uh, pay attention to that scene uh, when I was this time through. I, I think now that you said it, I, I remember that from the first time watching it. But I was like, why would he just give him a bomb? Like, but well, he didn't know it was in there. Yeah. He didn't know. <laughs> Well, he didn't, you know, he knew. But we're using, that's why, uh, they're all men, so we're using male pronouns. Um, well, I meant. Uh, I meant, the, why did the white death have a, have a, the briefcase have a bomb? Oh. And, but it didn't. I meant Brad it Pitt. didn't. Yeah, the bomb <laughs> And was Brad Pitt also didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we, yeah, we talked about uh, holding out for a hero. Uh, we talked about the, the archetypes and the luck and the uh, stabby stabby. I loved the name introductions, especially for yeah. the, the boom slang and the water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a really right. Nice the water one. bottle was a nice. <laughs> the whole <laughs> journey that it took to get there. All right. Again, it was like it was funny and it was interesting, but I think again the movie was trying to make a point about fate with the water bottle. I think that's why they included it. But again, it's like, oh, this it was a funny... At the same time, it could have been literally away. any water bottle. It didn't have to be that water right. bottle. Right, well, the thing... Okay, so just that... Just a piece that, of trash the, would have worked The water well. bottle is another example. Like, it would have been way better if if we had if we had seen... The first girl hit the thing. Yeah, yeah or, or something. Like, if, if, you, if we had seen some something besides it sitting with lemon and tangerine and then lemon drinking from it. Like, yeah. like it was... It was like, there wasn't... It, 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 since you're doing all the all the flashback stuff, like it should have been, you know, in the background of this of this scene. It didn't come up the, enough. Like it didn't. Yeah, yeah it didn't yeah. come up enough. And when it did, and and instead they added the extra scenes that weren't in it. You know, it would yeah. have been. It would have been a. It it would have been more of a. I don't know. More of it. More of an intricate, well thought out film. If you if you actually had those. Those right. moments. Like I feel like the movie as a whole would have been better if like we had a true protagonist in the sense that like the beginning established a protagonist who wanted something and like had like a good defensible reason for wanting it. And then all the shenanigans and hijinks occur and then at the end of the movie the fate stuff goes down and then kind of he gets it through an, an unorthodox unwieldy process, right? And then you're like maybe it was fate and you kind of had that end goal. I think if you kind of had that structure a little bit better, then that the whole thing would have made a lot more sense. So you're you I mean, wanted all so you Lady wanted Beavis and Butthead to America. I've never seen it, but sure. But they <laughs> they go on their they go on their, they their TV breaks, and then they go to get a new TV, and they go through all these crazy adventures going across the country and back, thinking they're gonna get 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 laid, and then they end up with a just a like slightly better TV. <laughs> that's so what it's like, like that's so you start like, yeah, but that's but that's yeah. what you're but that's what you're saying. Like like you should have like for like in this case, like maybe you think it would have been better if they would have actually killed each other all on the train and then it's the last stop and Brad Pitt 
hands over the brief the briefcase. Yeah, maybe that I mean, or he like, got off the train, which is what he really wanted. Right <laughs> after but, five minutes in, maybe like you could have a scene in the beginning, right, where Brad Pitt is talking with his therapist or something, and he's like, "I need to get out of this occupation and this life and find something else to do." But oh, I have this one last call for this one last job. Maybe I'll do it, and then it starts. And then at the yeah. end. Like stuff happens to where he finally come like comes to the conclusion that sounds like that, a ter- that sounds like it would be terrible. That actually sounds like, bad. I'm thinking like the- I love the fact that the therapist isn't shown. I feel like you'd you'd at least have to cut it in such a way that you don't show the therapist and the therapist never talks. Okay, but like the, the, the point that I'm making is not about the therapist themselves. It's just about like give a main character a goal that we sympathize and care about with. So it has to I, mean something. I and matter. still think that's and Brad like, Pitt getting off the train. But like, <laughs> yeah, well, I, get, now you're <laughs> wrong, Jeff. No, but like, why would we you get on the train this, then? We needed to end this like ten minutes ago when I agreed with you. Um, <laughs> I almost said something about it. Like two months in a row where Kendall agreed with Jeff. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you are. You could not be more wrong. Like the the only reason that this movie works is that is that there's this vague is that there's this vague goal at the beginning of the of the of the briefcase. I mean, it's literally it's it's the briefcase is probably. Like literally a reference to, to Pulp Fiction, sure. Which I have fallen asleep watching at least three or four times. And which so. is a be- which is a better movie that I would argue sort of does what this movie does, but better. But like that's the 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 Pulp Fiction briefcase. You never see what's in the briefcase, sure. Um, you know, and that's you know that's how the that's but how Pulp this... Fiction does what this movie does, but better, and it kind of accomplishes what I'm trying to get at, right? Because like Pulp Fiction is a movie where you have all these intersecting storylines that at first feel like they're not connected to one another but in the end of the movie they come together in such a way where you see meaning was involved through the whole time and everything was in, was like affecting one another and like influencing one another and it produced like a, a an ending that made sense and was satisfying right whereas i think this movie like, tries to do that but it doesn't really come together in a way that matters well, it still feel it felt I don't like know. Meaningless. a very yeah. different well, kind of movie because, it felt meaningless at the end because all the, all the stories in while, but, but satisfying is not the word that I would use to describe yeah, it all the stories in this are not independent they're they're very intricately linked and I and but that, but no they, are point, pulp, they are in Pulp are Fiction too the they, get, they link together by well, the yeah, end yeah but I, in Pulp Fiction, everyone has their own setting and is doing their own thing. And yeah, they kind of wind together towards the end. But in this movie, everyone is together the whole time, I mean, basically. I, right. But like, I, would, I wouldn't even argue they kind of wind together, right? By the end of Pulp Fiction, you, you, the timeline makes sense and everything everyone does completely ca- like leads, like the causal link is set up. And you're like, oh yeah, this happens because of this, because of this, because of this, right? You see the timeline, it just starts fragmenting. Man, so you think it's they're also just very I different movies. Did, I but apparently it. didn't, I really need to rewatch Pulp Fiction because <laughs> that is the complete opposite of <laughs> my takeaway from Pulp Fiction. And I grant that, I grant, like I said, I most of the times I watched it, I fell asleep in the middle. But specifically, I felt like that film was... Was meandering and directionless, and all of the and all of the plot lines went nowhere and did not interconnect at all. So I must be. I mean, it's, it's very likely that I'm wrong. Maybe. I maybe I need to watch it again. But, but like, even in Pulp Fiction, like when John Travolta, like dies at the end, but you realize like he's involved in some of the scenes, but then in other storylines he's not. And you're like, why wouldn't John Travolta's character be here for this? This is important. But it's because you find out at the end that that um, Bruce Willis shoots him. Right, and you're like, well, geez, oh, spoilers. he dies later. I don't Sorry, remember. Spoiler, spoiler. I, I, I apparently don't. Apparently, I, I don't yeah. remember. But that was that a scene. Happening. That scene happens like earlier, like the, yeah, the, the like, chronologically, it happens like yeah, early right. in the timeline. But it happens. I like the fact that this movie generally happens in a linear fashion, except for very obvious flashbacks. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think like, it's a much tighter movie for it, and I don't really see how they could have done something like that. But Pulp my point Fiction is, is like this, the ending, it just felt, it felt meaningless in the sense that, like, okay, a bunch of stuff happened. It's an Why? action movie. Yeah, but yeah, like, no, it's an no, action movie. No, 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 the point is, I mean, it's a, it's a cynical, I mean, the message is <laughs> that, like, I mean, the message is, even if it's about luck, even if it's about fate, it still sucks. I think that's <laughs> the point. I mean, I think that's the. I, now that now that we're talk, I wasn't. I, I now that we've talked through it and thought about it, I think that's the reason we have all these different, you know, all these different life philosophies thrown, it, thrown at, thrown out, and it's like it's because it doesn't, it doesn't matter if he's if he's lucky or if he's unlucky, he just was around a bunch of people trying to kill him. He got bit by he had a he had a pretty bad day, you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter if if Lemon can say who's a Thomas and who's a Diesel. If 
if somebody who if 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 his best friend just died, like you know, if his brother just died. Okay, let me, know, let me let me let me rephrase what I'm saying then, because I I feel like what I mean to say it's meaningless in the sense that like. It, for me, it doesn't come together in a in a satisfying way that ties up the story. Outside of like th- these things just happened, and now it's over. I don't know. Like I just didn't feel like it wrapped up in a way that I felt like was satisfying from a storytelling perspective. My counterpoint is the tangerine truck was incredibly satisfying, and I think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was satisfying in its, in, in like its own way. Sure, yeah. like it was fun. But like in terms of like the actual macro story of the movie and what was going on and why it was like I don't know okay, I don't know another, I I, I, another I, pin that fell I think over. that I think that the this was this was it, while at the same time being one of these movies it it did it did have some some meta commentary and some deconstruction and some philosophy who's a what's it you know like she just the freaking daughter just keeps coming back. And she is just a jerk. Like she has no, you know, she has no self reflection. So it's just a, it's just a movie about nihilism, then, right? Nothing yes, matters. Yes, it's, no it's actually <laughs> okay. It actually is. I mean, I do think that's what I'm trying to say is okay. that is that it's it's got a very nihilistic message. So for me, like I thought, of, I found a perfect way to describe it. Right? For me, I felt like the movie was a chess game where you're 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 coming up with all these secret moves, but in the end, it turned out it was just a game of Calvin Ball. Yes. If that makes any sense. And I was like, I okay. hate that. I hate when people say Calvin ball because I think it's a hack reference, but. Oh, um, whatever. But, <laughs> but I do, whatever. but I do think that that is what I've been saying this entire time. Okay. Yeah. So for that, me, that's, that's not the most satisfying story. And that was my original but. criticism of it is that you, you watch it and you think that, and you think that there was, they treat, they, they, they treat the audience like, see, you had all the clues to, to, Get that you know to get this. This is what really was happening behind the scenes if you were paying attention. Despite but the then, fact that they very deliberately not handed you those right, clues. but but then <laughs> but then there are zero, but there is zero yeah. foreshadowing and zero clues right. and, and every everything. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I yes. The, so that so I think we came full circle, <laughs> and I agree with ride. Jeff. Yeah, He's still wrong about some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> What is this entire movie about for you? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, right? Nihilism. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. All right. Any, any final any final thoughts on this? Ian, did you, you've you been pretty quiet. Did you have anything else to say? No, I'm good. Like, I've been enjoying this discussion, but um, it's really just a fun movie. A super action-packed, <laughs> yeah. fun episode of Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because it's about nothing. It's, oh kind of a, it's kind of a kung fu heist movie. Oh my god, that's almost as as Sein- hack as Calvin. Yeah, no, no, let's Seinfeld, not do that. And Seinfeld's not actually about nothing. It's about ridiculous social norms and custom and anyway. terrible people and bad people. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a, I have a whole. I could give you a whole dissertation about the four episodes of Seinfeld I've watched. <laughs> Special um, episode. Kendall will rant about <laughs> four episodes of Seinfeld. Because I always start at the beginning. <laughs> And watch like the first four to, four to six episodes, yeah. and then and then I drop off and forget that the show exists for another six months or mm-hmm. a year, and then I start, start at the beginning. <laughs> so I've seen those episodes a lot, but no, my theory is that is that is that Seinfeld figured out that it's like this is a show about terrible people, and it knows that it's about terrible people, and then Friends sometimes forgets doesn't that realize that they're terrible, about terrible people, people. Yeah. like like it i think friends is a direct reaction to seinfeld and is like i i do think that if you watch it and especially if you watch it from the beginning like these are clearly terrible people and and you know everybody's everybody's the worst and that is the point but sometimes the show forgets that that's the point i think chandler is a pretty good person by the end but that's about it well i mean i don't one. know about by the end but i'm, I'm talking because it because it moves but if chandler is a good person then it's still then the show still forgot that the point of the show is that these are all terrible right. people. um if you know if that's if that's the if that's the thing i haven't watched i haven't watched like the whole the whole show that many times in recent history but that's kind of my theory and i think that you have to when you watch a, a sitcom like you Anyway, who cares? Yeah. Um, who's next? Uh, it's Ian, right? That was me. Yeah, you're gonna All pick right. the next movie. What? Uh, what's? Oh, picking, what's yeah. What are we watching next time, Ian? All right, I pick the right stuff. 1983, long space movie. Go. I have another no idea long what this space movie. movie is. It's been like 
eight months since we've had a long space movie. <laughs> That's way too long. But it's not a it's not a science fiction, so no, it's uh, I've never heard of those. So okay, I well, mean, you're you in, know, you're at least that's what treat. they want you to think. Okay. It's not a science fiction. Yeah, you're in, you're in for a treat. It's okay. it's probably it's one of my very favorite movies, and it's my dad's favorite movie, and it's just a really good movie. So it's kind of about this. I have heard that it is a favorite dad movie. It's really good. Um, well, I guess apparently I'm gonna like it then. You are a dad. I am a dad. Yeah, but do you like dad movies? I I don't know. We'll find out next month, I guess. Well, I, oh, <laughs> you said it. On the Kettlecast, movie round table. I'm surprised you haven't seen This podcast is a production of the Kendallcast Podcast Network. If you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Kendallcast or make a direct donation through the PayPal link at kendallcast.ninja. Thanks for listening.